Want all the benefits of a Witch subscription for half the price of an annual membership? Well, act fast because our current offer ends on the 31st of January. That means time is running out to purchase an annual full access subscription at the low price of just £49.50. That's a saving of 50% and works out at less than £1 per week. A Witch subscription gives you access to all our product reviews, from fitted kitchens and ovens to mattresses, cars and televisions. Witch buy all the products we review and test them rigorously in our lab so you know what to expect from your latest purchase. And remember, our in-depth reviews are always independent and impartial. The full access subscription also gives you access to the Witch app, use of the Ask Witch service where you can receive one-to-one personalised buying advice, as well as the Witch magazine delivered to your door every month. What's more, sign up now and you will also receive the 2024 Witch Car Guide. So whatever you have planned for 2024, whether it's a new car or some long-awaited home improvements, save now with a half-price, full-access annual subscription and make better buying decisions all year round. Hello and welcome to the Witch Shorts podcast. I'm Rob Lilly-Jones. Now, have you booked your first holiday in 2024 yet? There's a reason I ask, and that's because if you are still trying to finalise your next trip, then can I suggest the latest episode of our Get Answers podcast. In it, our experts discuss the best places to visit this year, with a surprising destination recommended for your next long-haul trip. Just search Get Answers wherever you're listening to this podcast. Now, sticking with the holiday theme, and on today's episode, we're asking who is really telling the truth about flight delays, with airlines finding plenty of excuses to avoid paying the compensation that you would otherwise be entitled to. This piece was originally written by Trevor Baker, and a reminder that for the next few weeks, I'll be handing over to AI to tell us more. Most people are pretty trusting. When we asked passengers who had flight delays or cancellations whether they believed the reason given by the airline for the disruption, just over half said yes. That's despite the fact that your airline could save more than £40,000 per flight and around £150,000 on the longest flights by being economical with the truth. Airlines are required to compensate passengers when flights are delayed or disrupted but not if they claim extraordinary circumstances. We examined 10 cases across the UK's three biggest airlines where passengers said they thought they'd been given false reasons for delays or cancellations. The excuses ranged from the obvious ones, extreme bad weather and air traffic control restrictions, to surprising ones like debris on the runway. In each case, it was impossible to say for sure that the airlines were lying for financial gain or that there was a lie as opposed to confusion or miscommunication. But, after weeks of digging, we found evidence that some passengers weren't told the truth. The almost half of you who had doubts about your airline's excuses might have been right. Emily Allen, not her real name, and her friend Marina were delayed by over five hours on their Ryanair flight from London to Milan. They were told, after sitting on the plane for an hour, that the crew had gone over its permitted hours and couldn't continue the trip. They disembarked, were put on a bus to another plane and waited hours more. We were eventually offered food and drink, says Emily, but only if we paid, even for water. By the time they arrived in Italy, the transfer that was supposed to take them to an idyllic Alpine valley had long gone. The only way to get there was a taxi costing 380 euros. The faint silver lining should have been that they were owed 220 pounds each in compensation. But Ryanair didn't just say no to their claim, citing air traffic control restrictions. It put up a defence that Emily says was littered with inaccuracies and untruths. Emily and Marina both separately complained to Ryanair's dispute resolution scheme, Aviation ADR, only for the airline to continue to refuse to pay. It even denied there had been a change of planes. The burden of proof is on the claimants to show that they were transferred to another plane, it said, adding, 
the claimants were not transferred to another plane. Emily describes this as a barefaced lie. But the adjudicator at Aviation ADR accepted Ryanair's position and awarded Emily nothing. Marina, on the other hand, got an adjudicator prepared to do the bare minimum of checking the facts. He awarded her £220. We asked Aviation ADR why it had given two contradictory rulings for the same flight. It said it can't comment on individual cases, but agreed to review Emily's case. Ryanair didn't respond to a request for comment on this case study, but did reject our allegation that the reasons it gives to passengers are not always accurate. More than 18 months after Emily's flight, Aviation ADR finally reversed its decision and agreed that she was owed £220. She's still waiting for Ryanair to pay. British Airways passenger Chloe Hitch was expecting to arrive in Aberdeen at 10.30pm. She finally arrived, exhausted, at 2.19am. She too had to book an expensive taxi to her destination, but the good news was the crew on the flight had made a very clear and specific announcement that we would be eligible for compensation due to the lateness of the flight. BA, however, declined her claim on the grounds of bad weather. Bad weather is one of the extraordinary circumstances airlines can use as a defence against paying compensation. Another BA passenger, Margaret Hunter, arrived at Heathrow the same evening, two hours late on her way back from Las Vegas to Glasgow. In London, she was told by BA staff that all flights to Scotland were cancelled because of an IT failure. When she claimed compensation, BA used the same excuse as with Chloe, bad weather, and refused to pay. It wasn't until she went to BA's adjudication scheme, CEDR, that she and her husband finally got £520 each, with no admission of liability. BA admitted to us that it had made a mistake, but said Margaret was only owed money because her delayed Las Vegas flight meant she missed her flight from Heathrow. One reason that most of us believe airlines is that so many of their employees, airline pilots and cabin crew, are clearly decent people who are as frustrated by delays as we are. Two passengers we spoke to, Leo O'Connor and Owen Dan Engelsman, said that they were told by EasyJet flight and ground crews that a lack of staff was the main reason for their long delays from London to Tenerife and Amsterdam, respectively. But when their compensation claims were denied, they were told the reason for their delay was air traffic control restrictions rather than lack of staff. Anticipating their bewildered reaction, the official EasyJet response explicitly told them not to believe the crew. It said, Please note, this may not match the information you were given on the day of travel, as our staff in airports and on board may not have had all the information concerning your delayed flight. When we put their cases to EasyJet, it said that it stands by the decisions made to Leo and Owen, although it accepted that Leo's delay was caused by a number of factors. EasyJet told us it takes its consumer responsibilities under the relevant regulations seriously and will always pay compensation when it is due. It added that regardless of whether the cause of a cancellation is outside of our control, we always look to take care of our customers and provide direct information on their options. Robert, our former airline lawyer, argues that flight and cabin crew are likely to have the most accurate information about a delay or cancellation because they're on the ground dealing with it at the time. Nobody's denying that there have been cancellations and delays because of ATC issues, most dramatically the IT meltdown on August bank holiday. But a quirk in the law means it's very beneficial for airlines. While the regulations say other issues can be an extraordinary circumstance, air traffic control restrictions are automatically considered an extraordinary circumstance, with no compensation payable. Compensation solicitors Bot & Co. told us that, in its experience, EasyJet cites ATC restrictions in its defence far more often than BA or Jet 2. In July last year, EasyJet cancelled 1,700 flights 
blaming unprecedented air traffic control delays, but not everybody believed it. Some industry voices wondered, if the problem was air traffic control, why didn't other airlines have similar cancellations? Steve Jarry of the Prospect Union represents air traffic controllers, as well as other aviation workers. He argues that the real reason for the cancellations might have been lack of staff. EasyJet was probably too ambitious with its flight program, he says, and it wasn't able to hire enough crew to operate the whole schedule. Crucially, he says that reducing the number of flights, as EasyJet did, isn't a solution to the very real shortage of air traffic controllers. It's not clear how EasyJet could possibly know which flights to cancel and when, but cancelling flights does make a difference when it comes to crew, equipment and ground handling availability. These are all EasyJet's responsibility. EasyJet didn't respond to these points. Steve's adamant that the EasyJet cancellations in July were unlikely to be because of ATC in the main. The problem for passengers is knowing who to believe. Pilots, ground staff and cabin crew often say one thing. The people controlling the airline's purse strings say another. Air traffic control restrictions, as cited so often by EasyJet, are common enough that, if an airline says one happened on the day of your flight, it's almost certainly true. Whether it was the actual reason for your delay is another thing. Bad weather is similar. How can the passenger prove whether a delay was wholly or partly caused by the weather? But what about rubble on the runway? Mal Donald thought he'd caught EasyJet in a lie when it claimed his family's flight was cancelled because of debris on the runway at Belfast International. He received his expenses, but EasyJet denied compensation. Mal decided to check with Belfast International, which emphatically denied there'd been any issue on the runway. EasyJet backed down from claiming debris was on the runway, but continued to insist that the plane had been damaged somewhere. Belfast International reiterated to us that no debris was found at the airport. Despite this, Mal is still waiting for a ruling on his compensation from Aviation ADR. When an aircraft is damaged, surely there must be a proper investigation into how and where it happened. Somebody must know the truth, but it's never the passenger. With some flights worth up to £150,000 in compensation payments, we may not have evidence of airlines deliberately lying to avoid paying up, but we certainly have a motive. Lawyer Robert says as far as the airline he worked for was concerned, compensation claims were a battle against passengers and their solicitors. It was gladiatorial, it was a war. Several years later, and 20 years since the EU introduced flight compensation rules to try to prevent airlines cancelling flights unless they absolutely have to, the battle goes on. Thank you to Trevor Baker for that original piece published in the January issue of our travel magazine. And don't forget to tell us what you thought of what you've heard too. A reminder that we used Eleven Labs AI text-to-speech generator to bring you today's episode. And you can send your feedback to us at podcasts at which.co.uk. You can find more articles you'll find useful every day on everything from money and technology to home and garden advice by signing up to one of our many free email newsletters. And you can do that at which.co.uk forward slash newsletters. We'll be back next week for another episode of Wit Shorts. And thanks for listening. Wit Shorts was produced by me, Rob Lilly Jones, while the exec producer was Grace Burrell. It's Grace here to tell you all about our new podcast at Witch. It's called Get Answers, and you can listen now on whatever platform you like. Me and co-host Harry will be with you every other Monday, with episodes dropping each fortnight as we help you solve life's everyday problems. Whether it's getting the most from your weekly shop, finding travel hacks to save on your family holiday, or simply learning the tricks that make your everyday life easier. And we'll be joined by the very best experts too. Just search Get Answers and subscribe so that you can catch our episodes as soon as they drop. Thank you.